Hi, uh, in this video we're going to go over the steps uh, that I followed uh, earlier on when troubleshooting an Atari 130XE computer which didn't work with cartridges. Uh, it was pretty much functional in every other way, but uh, when you plugged a cartridge in, I was told uh, the thing locked up. Um, <clears throat> I found this to be the case eventually, um, although some cartridges did work, and while I did uh, already fix the machine, uh, I'm just going to go through the steps, uh, the troubleshooting steps required to um, fix it uh, in the hopes that it may be useful um, to anyone else uh, faced with a similar problem. So, let's have a look at the board. Um, <coughs> I've moved the microphone receiver by the way, so uh, if the audio stinks or, or whatever, I'm sure you'll let me know. Oh, we've got this strange interference on the camera now, which is nice. That's cool. Let's have a look at this. Uh, let's have a look. Gain on auto. That's probably why. I'm not sure. <coughs> I don't know, we'll just have to live with that anyway. So the first thing uh, we're going to look at on this machine is my trusty friend, SysCheck. <coughs> so I couldn't immediately see any problem with this board, but it seemed sensible to eliminate uh, RAM problems. <coughs> And the owner had already had a look at some of the jumbers on the board and reflowed a few chips. There were signs of uh, signs of rework on the bottom of the board here, which has since been cleaned up. So what we're first going to do, what I'm going to do is put the original MMU back, because, uh, spoiler alert, it was a bad MMU, and I'm going to prove it to you. I'll take the new one out. Put the old one back. And switch the machine on. We're going to use the Uno cart. It's very useful because I'm able to emulate the two cartridges that the owner uh, said didn't work, which is very useful indeed. So I tried a side cartridge with this thing, and um, the OSS 5 in 1 cartridge, and they worked. So we can replicate the problem here. Put a cartridge in, get our capture device, which will hopefully work. Put a keyboard in here. This keyboard's good because it doesn't, um, the reset key doesn't work. Turn it on, should boot at least. There we go. Don't worry about the green Ono cart, that's still a non standard firmware. So at first thought you think, well, yeah, it works. It works with the cartridge. And I believe the Uno cart is, um, the 6502 side is communicating with the uh, the cartridge firmware via CCTL. So it all appeared to be good. But anyway, he told me that, um, let me get these YouTube notifications. He told me that master type didn't work, but I even before I tried that, um, if we go back up here, ball blazer, that one hung. And the other two titles that he told me didn't work were uh, master type and pole position, which were the two cartridges that he had tested with the machine. So as we can see, it's crashed. It's a shame the reset key doesn't work on this keyboard, but never mind. So we'll power off again. We'll try one of the other titles, specifically the ones that I was told didn't work, which interestingly enough were both 16K, I think they're flat 16K ROMs. So let's try master type. Which also doesn't work. So the first thing I did with this machine was have a look at the board, just to see if there was anything uh, obviously amiss. 
Uh, I know there's a few blobs of solder around the place and I've picked away with uh, the probes of the uh, multi-tester just to see if they would clear any shorts or any little flecks of solder. Didn't seem to make any difference. Um, so I went around the bottom of the board with wick and I uh, applied flux to the cartridge connector. Whoa, really freezing problem on this camera today. Blimey. And a color color issue. Uh, you're going to be like that, are you? Ah, well. Um, went over the bottom of the board. Didn't make any difference. Uh, reattached this jumper wire, which is a factory addition. Uh, nothing made any difference at all. So the next thing to eliminate in a case like this, I reckoned, was the RAM. So here we have syscheck. So we plug syscheck in, we'll do the RAM test. And if you're actually interested in fixing computers, Atari 8-bit computers, you need one of these. Simple as that. Whether you're a solderer or a a technician if you just want to know what's wrong with the machine and you're going to do it well it's going to pay for itself immediately basically uh, I don't forgot the jumper set up right but we'll I don't think I have no I've got it the wrong way I'll put it into the RAM test mode test the RAM and this is just going to test the base 64k of RAM uh, now what this device can do aside from telling you whether you've got bad RAM is if you shift all the jumpers into the other position it'll boot the machine not using the uh, machine the motherboards on board RAM but using the RAM on the syscheck board and optionally the operating system ROM on the syscheck board so there you can eliminate as a potential issue the RAM and the operating system ROM and if you uh, do have an issue in that configuration it's possible that you could look at things like the MMU and things like that Freddy that sort of stuff so it's testing the the area under the ROM at the moment it's turned the operating system off and it found no problem now the next thing I tried so we're going to boot the machine from the RAM and the operating system ROM on the syscheck with the cartridge connected and we're going to see if we get the same problem assuming it works there we go so let's go back down well, well we know that ball blazer doesn't work so let's try that so now we know we're not using the RAM on the machine nor the operating system ROM on the machine and we still have a problem so there's we've eliminated something else so we can take all this out now and put those back into the test position. So I've checked out the connections on the board. I've reflowed uh, with flux any dodgy looking connections. And I know that the uh, operating system is probably okay. Uh, we know we haven't got a problem with the RAM. Now, if we have a look, uh, experience shows us that if we go to the schematic view here uh, shrink this down a little bit having installed a lot of uh, ultimate one megabyte boards in the past and now and again having seen problems with cartridges which were almost invariably related to the ribbon cable which plugs into the MMU socket on the motherboard and plugs in the other end plugs into the ultimate one megabyte board almost invariably if there was a problem with cartridges it was a problem with that cable and we can see why there's a problem with that cable because we've got direct connections from the MMU to the cartridge port now I think uh, I think RD4 and RD5 are uh, like a cartridge sensing line I believe correct me if I'm wrong I'm sure somebody will I'm not an expert in how these things work but and we've also got uh, I can hardly see this S4 and S5 which I believe 
um, are involved in uh, banking logic and that kind of thing. Certainly, I had a look at a schematic of an Atari Max cartridge, um, and there were connections from uh, discrete logic on the cartridge motherboard, on the cartridge PCB rather, to these pins on the MMU. So you can see that there's a direct connection between the cartridge and the MMU. So what we're going to what we're going to replace on this board? Well, we're going to replace the MMU. So that's what we did. So uh, in this case, I used hot air, took the old MMU off the board, cleared the holes with the soldering iron and the pump, fitted a socket, popped in a new MMU, and results were good, as I shall now show you. So that was the old MMU here that I've just removed. This one here. Now this is a like an in-house Atari part, but this other one is a uh, a sharp um, PAL chip. So I don't know whether these are less reliable, but who knows? So let's pop the cartridge in and see if we have a working machine. Switch on. There is our Uno cart. Let's have a little look at Ball, bla ball Blazer. It's not a red screen of death. And then we can see that the cart cartridge boots up. And we get a title screen. So to be sure. Let's go back and test the two, specifically test the two um, titles that um, we were told didn't work. I'll make this a bit bigger for you so you can see what's what. So we've got master type. Let's see if this works. There we go, master type working. I keep powering this machine off because this spare keyboard the reset key doesn't work in case you're wondering it's probably a bit glitchy on the cartridge port and now let's go down to pole position I should use the search facility I've kind of forgotten how this works um, there we go pole position and there we go with pole position. So there we go. A fixed machine which now works with cartridges. Result. So hopefully that shows that well, that would be the first port of call. But seriously, I cannot recommend syscheck enough because uh, had replacing the, C the MMU not uh, yielded results here. Um, this this tool, uh, which is of course by TFHH, is uh, absolutely indispensable. So, hopefully that was in some way illuminating. I'll have a look in chat, and there's no one in chat. So, we will wind it up. It's just a short video. It's very hot in here tonight, so I'm not going to hang around. There we go. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. So there we go, one fixed uh, 130XE motherboard, fully working with cartridges, and that's why I always, if it gets to the point where I've got to start replacing chips because I don't have a um, sophisticated logic analysis equipment here, um, I go for the MMU first. So I hope that was uh, of interest and I hope that uh, was illuminating in some way might be useful to you if you're trying to fix one of these things and uh, until the next video goodbye